This time, for a Bobo's Nerd Corner, I talk about one of the formative games of my childhood, Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger. I, it's one of my top five. It's right up there on my top three, actually, sitting there on its shining platform. Now, this game was for the Super Nintendo, and it was not exactly a late release or anything, kind of early. But for RPG players out there, we were used to pretty much enemies that were stationary. You push attack, your guy, you know, Final Fantasy, basically. It goes forward like this, enemy flashes, damage numbers. When you went into battle, screen flash, separate, separate window. You were doing the battle thing now. But Chrono Trigger kind of sped all that along. Battle happens, you just go to battle. There's a battle happening. But the neat thing that blew my little mind out of my head at that point was the enemies moved. They rolled to attack you. Things happened. Holy shit, enemies are moving. That's immersive as fuck for my little head. <laughs> because to that point, like I said, I was used to the immobile enemy. You were attacking a portrait. Portrait flashes takes damage. Portrait flashes, you get hurt. <laughs> This was sort of the thing until then. And yes, I know, Fantasy Star and a few other games already had moving enemies to a point, but this was the game that really made it flow. They moved as you would expect them to in the 16-bit environment. Birds actually swooped down. Things attacked you and shot things. It was cool. But more importantly, this is an adventure story. It's not super convoluted. It's not filled with all this esoteric stuff. It's a time travel adventure with a group of kids and the characters they collect from ages. It's fun. It's simple. Combat works. The story tells itself right in front of you without you having to connect all these dots and strange things going on. It's action-packed. It leads itself to being played. You want to know what happens. You feel for what's going on because it tells you a story that makes sense, that works, and is easily related. And I feel like a lot of games miss that idea anymore, especially now where, especially for RPGs, man, you now need this ridiculous story spanning worlds and universes and time and space and the philosophies of life and dimensions. But you don't really need any of that for a good story, do you? None of it. What you need for a good story is a story. It is that simple. You need a story that works, is digestible, and fun. And this game gives you that. And it gives you that in a time where we had Final Fantasy, really, as the dominant RPG for RPG players, where every game kind of delved into that. I mean, I love Final Fantasy, but they really have a heavy-fisted sort of philosophy to their games by the end of it, where they can't just let you fight Mr. Big Bad Guy. He's got to have this from another universe thing going on. And all of this, you know what I'm talking about if you played it at all. And refreshingly, this game does none of that. Yes, you have villains from time and space and all, but it never loses that element, that spark of fun and adventure where you don't need to have like 20 paragraphs spoken by the final boss about why he's doing what he's doing and how time compression will happen or some crazy nonsense. No, it's, this is the bad guy, do some shit, mess him up. He wants to fuck with your shit. Get him. <laughs> that's kind of how it goes at certain parts. And that's fun. It's simple. You're running. Hey, there's a bad guy. He's doing bad things for bad times. He's a mustache twirling villain. Go whack him. And you know what? That shit's fun. It's good. It's simple. And the game also has its plot. You have villains. You fight for reasons and stuff. But again, that point, I cannot say enough, ever. Fun is not lost. Adventure and that sense of wonder, it's not lost. And I feel like this is a lesson so many video game makers could relearn. This idea that it can be simple. It can just be fun to play and read and enjoy and taste and then talk about later in a video, right? And then fondly reflect upon it. It doesn't have to play for hundreds of hours. None of them. I fondly remember it later and will play it again. And that's an achievement. Just something to think about.